Our example reads as follows. Z clock restores the impressed amount of $400 on the last day of each month. His transactions for April 2018 were as follows. But before we have a look at his transactions, let's have a look at the format of the petty cash book. Now our petty cash book is divided between our debit side, which is on the left hand side, and our credit side. As you can see on our credit side, our accounts are grouped to postage, stationary traveling expenses and so forth. So now that we know which side is the debit side and which side is the credit side, let's start with our transactions. Also remember, just like the cash book, our petty cash book is an asset and our assets increase on the debit side. Now let's have a look at his transactions. On the 1st of April, petty cash in hand is a question mark. Now what we should do here is find out what amount is the petty cash on hand. How do we get that? We go back to our example. It says that Z Clark restores the impressed amount of 400 on the last day of each month. So on the last day of each month, if we use this example, the last day of the previous month was 31 March and on 31 March Z Clark restored the impressed amount with $400. So the following day which is 1 April will be our petty cash on hand. So our petty cash on hand will be $400. Now let's go ahead and enter that in our petty cash book. There we go. Our 400 is on the debit side and this will be our opening balance therefore we put in balance brought down. Let's have a look at the next transaction. On the third bought envelopes voucher number 01 for $27. Let's enter that in our petty cash book. So in our date column we will write 3. In our details column we will write envelopes. Our voucher is 01. The total is 27 and then we will group this expense under stationary because envelopes is part of our stationary expenses. Lastly, we also enter this on the credit side of the petty cash book because money is flowing out from our petty cash. Let's move on to the next transaction. On the 7th, purchased pencils, $19. So again, this transaction will come on the credit side of our petty cash book. The date is the 7th, the details is pencils and take note that the voucher number was not entered. We will continue with our voucher numbers by just adding 1. So our previous voucher number was 01, this one will be 02. The amount was $19 which we enter in the total column and again pencils is part of our stationary expenses. Therefore we will group it under stationary. Let's move on to the next transaction. On the 10th taxi fare for the worker $18. Again we will enter this on the credit side of the cash book. On the date it's the 10th details is taxi fare. Voucher number we continue 03. The total amount is $18 and this is a traveling expense. Therefore, we will classify it under traveling expenses. Our next transaction is received cash for stationery taken for private use $31. Now, this should come on the debit side because we received the cash. So, the $31 will come on our debit side in our receipts column. The description is stationary. The date was the on the 11th and in the folio column we will write in N6. Our next transaction is on the 13th crown keepers wages $70. This transaction will be recorded on the credit side of our petty cash book. We continue with our voucher numbers. The next number will be 04. The total is $70 and this will come under our sundry accounts. The account is wages. In the folio we write N8 and the amount is $70. Let's move on to our next transaction. 
On the 18th, fuel for the vehicle, $50. This will also be recorded on the credit side. On the 18th, fuel, we continue with our voucher number, 05. The total amount is $50 and we will classify this expense under traveling expenses. Our next account is toilet paper purchased $11. On the 20th, toilet paper, we continue with our voucher number 06. The total amount is $11 and this will be classified under sundry expenses because it does not fit under postages, stationery or traveling expenses. Let's move on to the next transaction. Stamps purchased $10. On the 23rd, stamps, the voucher number will be 07. The amount in the total column will be $10 and we will classify stamps under postages. On the 25th, paid for courier fee $25. So in the date column, we will enter 25. Our description in the details column will be courier fee. Our voucher number will be 08 and the total is 25 and our courier fees we will classify under postages. On 26 April we paid a creditor MRIs to settle account in full $63. On the 26th our details will be MRIs, our voucher number will be 09, the total amount will be $63 and this is a sundry accounts payment. The account is MRIs. In our folio, we will enter CL1, Creditors Ledger 1, and the amount will be $63. Let's move on to the next transaction. On 29 April, paid for printing papers, $41. You can probably guess this is stationary. So we will enter this on the credit side of the cash book. The voucher number will be 10. The total amount will be $41 and we will classify this under stationery. And lastly, on 31 April, the Petty Cash cashier received cash to restore the impressed amount. Now, before we restore the impressed amount, we need to do the following. 